Everyone knows that at the heart of every single great story is usually some kind of uniquely extraordinary, amazing main character or protagonist. But when it comes to thinking about our stories and the characters in those stories, what we typically do is we think about here are the characters and then here are the plots. So we kind of separate in our mind, plots are over here, the, the situations, the circumstances, what is going on, all the different plot points, the midpoint, and, and the, the, the three acts, that's over here, that's plots. And then over here are the characters, right? Starting with the main character, and then usually you're going to develop an antagonist and a love interest. Those are usually the three major characters. And the truth is, in most great stories, we do see these three major characters sort of swim into view and, and come into fruition. We have a, a protagonist and an antagonist, and then we have um, a love interest. Now, in my book, Your Storytelling Potential, we actually think about characters very differently. So, for, ex for example, let's think about, just for one moment, the antagonist. Now, in most movies, the antagonist is usually a character who has their own agenda. They've got their own goal. They're not, typically, they're not necessarily an enemy of the protagonist. And this is a flaw that many writers um, make when they're thinking about their own stories, is they think that you have the antagonist and you have the protagonist and they're battling each other. And that couldn't be further from the truth in the vast majority of stories. Rather, what you have is an, an, an antagonist who has an agenda, has a goal. Think about the movie Die Hard for just one moment. In the movie Die Hard, you've got this, this Hans Gruber character and his, and his group of thugs and terrorists who take over the building. They take all the hostages. And what is their goal? Is their goal to fight the, the Bruce Willis character? They don't even know the Bruce Willis character exists. The Bruce Willis, character, Bruce Willis character is not supposed to be there. Rather, what their goal is, is to rob the building. That's why they're doing, taking their actions. In other words, they've got an independent goal. They've got an independent agenda. Now, you'll notice that their goal, their agenda, which is independent of the main character, is what creates the story. And we call this in your storytelling potential the A story. And we don't use this concept of an antagonist, rather we call it a proximate cause character because what that proximate cause character, which is typically an antagonist, but not always, what that character does is they cause that A story to happen. In other words, the proximate cause character has an agenda. They've got a goal. And usually that goal is somehow in, it collides with the goals and um, situations that are taking place within the main character's personal ongoing reality. And this is the idea that we refer to as the underlying cause, an underlying cause character, and the B story. And what we see then is this is how you create great characters that are linked to the plots that are taking place within your story by understanding how each character is linked to a plot that is taking place. And then what we see happen is off of these major plots, what we call the A story and the B story, are more plots that branch off of those very relevant plots. And each one of those plots that branch off of the major plots, think about the, uh, the police officer, Sergeant Powell, in Die Hard, right, who becomes a major plot. But what is that? That's a subplot. You see, that's what subplots are. Subplots are simply branches, new, relevant storylines that come off of what we call the A story and the B story. And each one of those storylines introduces a unique, new, relevant character into your novel or into your movie. And this is how you create amazing, relevant, rich, thematically rich, three-dimensional characters.